the 21st Century Smithport. My name is Jesse Isidore. I'm the senior here at Smithport Area High School and would like to introduce you to some of the people who were instrumental in creating Plain of Smithport. Although hundreds of students and community members worked on the project over the past 10 years, we interviewed a few of the key individuals who made this all happen. They will discuss the project from its inception to the present and offer suggestions how you might set up your own planet without some of the growing pain. Well, actually, the idea came from Ross Porter, the history teacher for Smithport High School. And Ross is quite an innovator. When he started working on the history project for the school, I happened to have uh, two of the original history books printed in 1890 that detailed much of what happened in Smithport. And as a result, uh, he borrowed those and got the basis for his project going. And from then on, it expanded into uh, thousands of photographs and interviews with hundreds of people and uh, research all over the town and all over McKean County. Well this project grew, started back in, in 1998 and it was a, a, a class project and I had a group of interested students who were uh, fascinated with local history and so we started to collect pictures and we got the idea to do a historical geography project. And so what we did is that we laid out and began building our website of our local history based on the geography of the area. And so that every photograph that we worked with would connect to another photograph so you could literally feel as if you were moving through time. A lot of what we do in Planet Smithport has to do with community involvement. Um, different members of the community bring us different pictures or stories that they have that they've found. And that's usually where we start from. And then Smithport is fortunate enough to have a huge online database of our old newspapers. We had the McKean County Miner and the McKean County Democrat, which began in the, the mid-1800s and we have those clear up until I believe the 1980s. But those have been an extreme help to the Planet Smithport team because we can go through and read through the newspapers and find the different stories so we can do some additional research. It used to be that a photograph came in, you couldn't find any information on it because no one bothered to write the names or the addresses or anything that would be helpful. But now with the newspapers being digitized, you can go back and pick a date that you think is appropriate for the photograph. Then you'll find a story that matches up with the photograph and you're on your way. I deal with mostly articles on the website from the newspapers. Um, if I find an article on an existing page, I will take that and I will write it and turn it into a Word document. And then after turning it into a Word document, we'll then attach it to Dreamweaver. And then it goes directly onto the website. URL uh, of this is uh, smithporthistory.org. But it was quickly named Planet Smithport. And as you work through it, uh, you will see the red arrows and the red arrows move you throughout the project. And any place that you drop into the project, you can move to any other page in the project geographically. So it's, it's kind of like the theory all roads lead to Rome, all roads lead to any other point in the site just by exploring. And as we worked on it, uh, it kept getting better and growing because we kept finding more pictures. And we started um, zeroing in on 1895. And we've moved bef from there forward and from there backwards. But 1895 is a great place to start because there, there were a lot of cameras out there, photographers, and they took glass negatives. And the glass negatives were filled with data that had never been enlarged. And what they did is they did direct prints. So when we scanned those pictures, there was detail in the pictures that was hidden that no one had really seen. And so it allowed us to sometimes scan that piece of the picture that was in the back and move forward into the picture. 
I really enjoyed getting to learn about our community from hundreds of years ago. It was really interesting, and you see a community in a different light. And I think I appreciate our community more. Definitely learn how to work your way around these certain programs like Dreamweaver and Photoshop, and learning lots of things I never knew about them. It's an educational experience, definitely, but it's it's a lot more fun than it sounds. It's cool to find out about the local houses and the people who lived in the houses before that and why some people in your town today still have wealth. Um, just the little things that you find out are really neat about your local history. You know, local history is, is pretty much an ignored discipline and yet it's so vital because it tells us where we came from. It, in the process, it tells us our local geography uh, and the connection between the settlement uh, and the development of the land uh, as uh, tied in with the geography. But more importantly, I think, is that by understanding who we are, where we came from, whether we grew up here or not, what it does is it gives us the tools to know how we move forward in the future. Planet Smithport, or a project like this, is not the end project. It is the by-project. The goal is the part of, is this interaction, it's the students understanding their community, it's the adults working with the students on a one-to-one, -one. it's a melting away of differences, it's an excitement, and it's happened over the 11 years we've done this. We work with laptops and we work with self-powered scanners that power off the USB. So we can literally scan a photograph on the hood of a car on the fly and that's very handy. Uh, we use Photoshop, we use a program called Dreamweaver and it's not how many bells and whistles you build into this. It can be simple. That's not the goal. The goal is to tell this, to have the students explore and to tell the story of various parts of their community and then fit them together geographically so it makes sense. Now, one of the things we've done, and we've done it since uh, the beginning of Planet Smithport, is that we have held community nights, or community gatherings, and they're always at night. Sometimes they're at school. So, uh, we've held them recently at the senior center, uh, but they could be at the library, uh, someplace that's, uh, you're dealing with seniors, so you want it to be handicapped accessible, uh, and our students go down, and people every time bring in photographs for us to scan and the students are working with the adults and often the age gap is amazing uh, whether we go on a community night or go to someone's house we'll have people who are 80 and 90 years old working with high school students I'll be happy to give you some advice on this this has been uh, an obsession of mine. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you can contact me at, I'll, I'll give you the easy one, project at smithporthistory.org. Project at smithporthistory.org or Ross Porter at smithporthistory.org. And uh, if you have a question or need a way to get started, I'll give you um, some advice and, and be glad to help you get started. <music>